I think for all the enthusiasm, there's one thing on everyone's mind. You have been in the health tracking business for so long, but now you've got some serious competitors uh, yeah. to go up against. Um, how are you going to differentiate, or how are you going to maintain your users now that you have the likes of Apple and Google in this space? Look, it's a huge market. Consumers are spending over $200 billion uh, on health and fitness products and services. So for any company in this category, it's an incredible opportunity. But for us, we have a wide range of products, different price points, 59 to 250, different sizes, form factors. We have a great partnership with Tory Burch. We're cross-platform compatible. Uh, so I feel really great and comfortable about our product positioning. Now, you also, for all the competition, have some legal issues with Jawbone, another thing investors are looking at. Do you feel confident you're going to be able to resolve those? Look, we have 85% market share. Um, we're the clear leader. And uh, you know, for these lawsuits, I can't comment too specifically, but obviously we're going to defend ourselves pretty vigorously. Now, it's very different when you're a private company and successful, you are making a profit, than when you're a public company having to live up to those expectations quarter after quarter. We just had Jack Ma of Alibaba say, I wish I never did it. Half kidding, but perhaps half serious. Are you concerned about that sort of quarterly pressure? Uh, no, we've always had a lot of financial discipline within the company. That's how we got here. And um, look, obviously can't guarantee the future, but that's a lot of my focus. So what are you going to do with the money that you just raised? Uh, there's a lot of things, you know, increased spending and ROI. Look, uh, we want to stay competitive, um, and a lot of the dollars are going to go to uh, just creating incredible new products and services. And what do you see as a growth area or something you might expand into? In the beginning, it was really, I think, fitness oriented. Where, where is Fitbit going to go and evolve to when you talk about research and development? What are some of the markets you're looking at? Look, the mission of the company is really broad. We're about using technology to help people get healthier and more active, specifically by giving them data, guidance, and inspiration. So if you think about that mission, there's so many things that we can do. We just have to prioritize. And you talk a lot about community and about staying in touch. How big of a part is that to the platform of Fitbit? It's huge. We have incredible network effects. You can almost think of Fitbit as the world's largest paid social fitness social network. Uh, and so people buy Fitbits because their friends and family are already passionate users, and that's driven a lot of our growth. And talk to me a little bit more about the health aspect aspect of it. We sort of know those those hardcore fitness people are so into it. How do you see this developing for health? And would this be something that someone who maybe doesn't go to the gym all the time would think about using? How would it help them with their health specifically? Look, our primary user actually is somebody who's not very fit. Um, you know, doesn't have to be young. They're slightly overweight. So we feel that we really understand these users. And as our devices and services get sophisticated over time, um, we'll be able to help them beyond fitness into possibly more health-related issues. And, and are there partners that you're thinking about working with in terms of healthcare providers? Possible. I think there's a lot of people who are excited to work with us, and uh, we're excited to work with them. So uh, that's what drives me every day.